Taekwondo is one of the most common martial arts today when it comes to sports. And unfortunately with that comes a ton of criticism, usually stemming from its point-based sparring to not being grounded in real fighting. It's also often disregarded as ineffective in an MMA ring until all of a sudden it is. So today's question is, just how relevant is Taekwondo in MMA? By now, most of you have probably already seen that beautiful UFC knockout by Joaquin Buckley on October 10th. It was a gorgeous finish, and it quickly became one of the most talked about knockouts of the year. So, we thought that this would be a good example of Taekwondo in MMA. Now, earlier this year, we did an episode looking at the pros and cons and the differences between traditional martial arts and mixed martial arts. And when we talk about mixed martial arts in this context, we're usually referring to the paradigm of the UFC or other similar MMA sporting events. So that link is in the description below. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly encourage it because one of our missions on this channel is to bring about a bunch of different martial arts together and, and respect each other. And I want to erase that division, that sharp division that we often see between mixed martial artists and traditional martial artists because the truth of the matter is they really do depend on each other. And we wanna blur the lines of that discrimination. And one of the most common remarks that accompanies that debate is usually it'll never work in the ring. Kempo, karate, taekwondo, it'll never work in the ring. I can see the reason of this comment at face value. An MMA fighter usually has multiple disciplines under their belts. They train for a knockout, full contact, and a lot of pressure testing is involved. So sure, an individual art is not likely to fare well in the ring, especially if that person has not gone through the harsh regimen and training that an MMA fighter typically goes through. Now my Kempo is background, and I'll be the first one to admit that if you took a Kempo-only martial artist, plucked him from the dojo, and dropped him in the UFC ring, he's gonna get rocked, and he's gonna get rocked fast. But to be fair, if you take a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu only practitioner with no other arts mixed in, pluck them from their dojo and throw them in the ring, they're not likely to fare much better either. The key to mixed martial arts is exactly that, in that they're mixed. You know, a fighter's gonna take multiple disciplines and pluck the best techniques from each one and put together a blend and pressure test it to see what's effective and what they can personally pull off in the ring. So take that same Kempo guy, give him some boxing, give him some grappling, and put him through the same regimen of continuous sparring and some pressure testing, and all of a sudden you've got somebody who's gonna fare a little bit better in that ring. I personally have a tremendous amount of respect for anybody who gets in fights inside that ring. It takes a strong constitution to do that. My former instructor taught a lot of local MMA guys, and I did get the opportunity to spar with a lot of them. And while sometimes I was able to hold my own just fine, I know, and I'll be the first to admit, that I'm not going to last very long against them in that ring, at least not without going through the major regimen and training that they did. So when somebody says, oh, if karate or taekwondo are so good, how come you never see it in the ring? Well, you do. You see it all the time. You just have to know what to look for. Now, you're never going to see a Kempo self-defense technique play out in the ring. That's not what they're meant for, and quite honestly, that's a topic we want to put on the table for another day. But for someone who's in Kempo, will recognize foot maneuvers, body checks, and signature strikes. And quite honestly, that goes for a lot of different martial arts. You know, someone in Shotokan is going to see and recognize Shotokan techniques. And we also covered that topic in Shotokan and MMA, and I've included a link for that below as well. I think it's worth the watch. It's a great point of discussion. But when it comes to Taekwondo, that criticism is a little bit baffling because it tends to stand out when it's used in the ring, and it's used a lot. So first, let's look at a few reasons why Taekwondo would not be effective in an MMA competition, and then we're gonna look at some reasons why it could be, and actually is. The first thing to consider is, one, there are many different versions and types of Taekwondo, and we're not gonna go into the differences today, but they range from anywhere from, you know, full contact, more realistic fighting, to what we see, you know, in Olympic, what many people considered watered down karate. But, you know, it doesn't really matter the difference right now, we don't have to get into that, because today's comments really apply to Taekwondo on the whole. And that brings us into the next point of contention, which is exactly that, points. Point-based sparring and competition is often looked down upon in MMA circles, mainly because it's not based in actual realistic fighting. And that's a fair critique because when it comes to a real-life fight, it's not point-based. Neither opponent is going to stop and reset after landing a hit. No near hits count. And in many times, the person who lands the most hits isn't necessarily the one who wins the fight. So correct, that type of fighting style does not fit the paradigm of a realistic fight. Another criticism is in that in many Taekwondo competitions, there's a severe limit on what you can do in terms of your hands, like striking with the hands and the hand techniques. So fighters are mainly limited to just kicks, which honestly ignores a whole regimen of fighting on its own. And there are also often restrictions on takedowns and leg kicking as well. And because of that lack of hand striking, you often see competitors with their hands down at their sides and they're bouncing around a lot. When it comes to a real life fight, one of the last things you want to do is keep your hands down at your side like that. 
And finally, which is related to the point aspect of the match, is that many times in Taekwondo competitions, it's light to medium contact. You know, the goal is to score points. It's not always to knock out the opponent. So if you're gonna look at Taekwondo in this perspective, of course it's not gonna work in MMA. You can't just take one of these competitors and drop them in the ring and expect them to last well. It's, you know, it's a valid point in that context. But honestly, it's not really a fair comparison because you're looking at two completely different styles of competition, two different sports, two different rule sets. It's like complaining that baseball players don't tackle the runners like they do in football. You know, two different sports, two sets of rules. But now let's look at the other side of the coin and take a look at the Taekwondo one and analyze why the techniques could be and are effective in an MMA fight. It goes back to having that mix of arts. Generally speaking, a single art, regardless of the art, is not gonna fare well in the ring. Even high-end grapplers need to add boxing or some sort of striking art to round themselves out a bit. In fact, Taekwondo is one of the most common arts to find in the mixed fighters regimen. So why is that exactly? What is it about Taekwondo that makes it such an asset in MMA? Well, the first thing we can do is let's take one of its perceived weaknesses and turn it into a strength. In Taekwondo, most competitions, you've got limited hand strikes. You can't do takedowns, you can't do leg kicks, there's no knees, there's no elbows. So when you take all that away, what is there left to do? Kick. And what happens when kicking is all you can do? You learn to kick really well. Taekwondo practitioners have some of the fastest, sharpest, and often sneakiest kicks in the martial arts. They're also incredibly accurate. A well-executed Taekwondo kick will pinpoint its target. And just because someone does point fighting does not mean they can't deliver power with those kicks. I've sparred many men and women in Taekwondo that have had some serious explosive energy. And for someone who trains primarily in kicking, knows how to gauge distance very well. In fact, I would go so far as to suggest that the advantage of controlling distance between opponents would be on their side because it pretty much dictates the tactics and techniques that they would use. And if they're fighting somebody who does not have Taekwondo experience, then many times they can deliver kicks and combinations that the other person wouldn't expect or literally see coming. I agree, someone who only does Taekwondo is not gonna fare well in the ring, but you give them equal training in boxing and grappling, and all of a sudden those Taekwondo kicks are gonna blend in quite nicely. But in the interest of fairness, I believe the reverse is also true. Take that MMA guy, limit his punches, take away his knees, his elbows, his takedowns, his leg kicks, and full contact, and put him in a Taekwondo competition, and suddenly, now, the advantage is on the Taekwondo side. You know, context is everything. So we see Taekwondo in an MMA fighter's arsenal all the time, and it's pretty distinct compared to Muay Thai and other kicking arts that are also common. Muay Thai is awesome, and it is designed to break you. You know, generally speaking, the kicks are back leg focus for power, and you see less chambering because that's because a Muay Thai kick isn't intended to make contact and retract, but rather go through the target. You know, those kicks are for breaking the legs and the body and delivering devastating and crushing blows. Taekwondo kicks are usually focused on speed and precision. And also you see a tighter chambering action, which helps this practitioner redirect the kick or set up a series of follow-ups. And then you've got the front leg. Taekwondo practitioners are really good with their front leg, and many times they can generate more power with their lead leg than Muay Thai practitioners can. So add in those signature spinning combinations, the hooked and angle kicks, and that sheer speed and precision, and you have a pretty effective kicking regimen. I personally believe to be a well-rounded fighter, you need focus training on hand strikes, kicks, takedowns, and grappling. If you can solidify all four of those aspects, you will be a serious contender. And if you get someone like Boss Rutin who's got extensive experience in Taekwondo, Muay Thai, kickboxing, and Kyokushin Karate, well then have fun with that. So for all the criticism that Taekwondo gets, it's kind of funny because when we do see a beautiful knockout like we just saw, that's all everybody talks about and it goes viral. So, you know, Taekwondo is front and center in MMA. You just have to take the moment to notice it. So I wanna finish off this topic by paraphrasing something that Joe Rogan said. He said that in Taekwondo, without the takedowns and punches to the face and leg kicks and all of that, they are forced to develop effective kicking under those parameters and making those kick techniques work. And they can still work great, but the reason that Taekwondo would suffer in the ring is because they don't have the defense of all the other parameters. Once they can mix in the other attributes along with their kicks, then you have a serious contender. He also said that he believes the best way to learn those kicks is actually in the Taekwondo vacuum. You know, not while you're trying to learn grappling and hand striking at the same time, but learn with the restrictions that they have and then make the techniques work under those conditions. And do the same thing with boxing and grappling. You'll learn them individually and make them solid, and then you will be a serious contender. I think that's pretty solid advice. So what are the best Taekwondo techniques that you have seen or maybe even pulled off yourself in an MMA match? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.